All right, our second topic today. We wanted to take a look. We've seen, uh, the, and we'll put this in the show notes. Uh, there was an article in The Ringer talking about the, the, the fact that in movies nowadays, there is less and less and less sex, sex scenes going on and trying to figure out what's going on you know, with that. Like, well, why is, you know, if you run the database for the last 20, 25 years or so, just a steady decline in how much sex is in the movies. And it's, it's something happening in our culture, you know, that not necessarily something that's good or bad, but just something that's interesting happening that, you know, the art form in that way, you know, and this is not talking about like PG movies. This is just looking at apples to apples, so to speak. And so the, you know, the, the, in the piece, like I said, we'll have in the show notes, it lays out, out the numbers and so forth and gives some ideas on, on what they think may be happening. But just from a cultural standpoint, what do you think is happening in American culture where you go from, you know, rated R blockbusters like Basic Instinct and Fatal Attraction to stuff like that nowadays wouldn't would not see the inside of a theater, it, it, especially from the t- standpoint of a blockbuster, you know, kind of movie that's expected to get a lot of of, of uh, people going to it. Yeah, I, I, th- I thought this topic was very interesting because I've actually thought about this in recent years. Um, I, I think I told you in a private conversation that when my family and I were going to watch Top Gun Maverick, I think a year and a half ago, whenever it came out, um, you know, we decided the night before to watch Top Gun, the original. And, you know, I forgot there's that love scene with Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis that goes about, you know, it's probably six, seven minutes. Mm-hmm. And I found myself like, you know, I had my 13 year old at the time is probably 12 and my wife there, you know, and I found myself getting a little uncomfortable after like a first minute or two. <laughs> but then I find myself like thinking about, man, I was like 10 years old when I saw the first movie and I saw it with my mom and I don't be, remember being uncomfortable at 10 sitting there watching the same Top Gun scene because back then that's when I realized, man, every single movie back in the eighties and stuff, like when I was a kid, like they all had love, like serious movies. I'm talking yeah. about comedies, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but yeah. even actually, even revenge of the nerds, remember had a little, when they were on the, um, the little moon scene, they had a little scene. So even the comedies had love scenes. And that's what, oh, it was, that's what it, was, it was much more pro forma. It would be in most, yeah, like, like, most like PG 13 and up, you'd have some yeah, type if, of, if it wasn't scene. Rambo or commando. Yeah. If there was a, 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 you know, characters that were male and female that had some sort of relationship at some point in the movie, there was going to be a love scene. And so <laughs> you're right. Like, like, and that's what I started thinking. Like, yeah. in um, like just lately the last, you know, 10, 20 years, I don't remember seeing love scenes like that, like intimacy and the kind of stuff like that. And not porn. I'm just saying like a love scene, like it used to be in the old, you know, 20, 30, 30, 40 years ago films. Um, I, we don't see that anymore. And you're right. It is curious. So um, I'll hand it back to you. I mean, I know that the, the article we're referencing had some interesting insights, which, which we'll discuss, yeah. but yeah, that was my thought is it's something I had noticed before. So it was interesting to see it, you know, in yeah. a, in a well, but article. also that you noticed, that you felt an, a discomfort when it happened, yeah. and because you, you don't consider yourself a prudish, prudish guy, but you're like, yo, why do I, I feel a certain way about that? And I think that you know, and I'm a parent as well, and so I have two kids, and I'm looking at that, and I, I, I notice that you know, like when the expectation I have when I'm watching movies with my kids is generally speaking that 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 there won't be love scenes and things like that, except when I whenever I watch them, like, oh, let me show you this movie from when I was younger. You know, I'm always like, hmm, I wonder what this is going to have in it. Let me let me yeah. try to remember. But a lot of times I won't remember the the, the, the love scene because they didn't stand out to me like that. And again, because yeah. it was so, so common, it was just like, oh, yeah, there's probably something in there, some kind of intimate scene or whatever. And so I don't know. I think that there's something about like the, 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 the piece mentions as far as like, you know, the the idea to take these things. A lot of times the films will go international, things like that. Um, you know, like the the availability of porn, you know, also affects and I, this is what I, I came to previously when just thinking about this idea was just like, hey, you know, like maybe that was considered a draw in movies before. But I don't know that that itself like, oh, there's you know a couple and, you know, the, the woman is like, oh, come see this movie with me. And the guy's like, oh, I don't really want to see this movie. But, oh, you know, they, I heard that what's her name he was in there, you know, going yeah. wild. And maybe I'll go see it with my girlfriend or whatever. So I don't, <laughs> but nowadays, you know, just with the way the Internet's set up and the availability of porn on the Internet, maybe that's not the same draw. Um in terms of what's happening happening culturally, though, I think it does reflect something. You know, like I don't know if we're becoming more prudish um, in terms of kind of out. We're, we're co- becoming more bifurcated, I should say. Yeah, I was going like, to say it's more this, compartmentalized. Everything. Yeah, like yeah. so if we're looking if we're looking at kind of standard stuff, we want less intimacy, and if we're looking at 
kind of intimate stuff. We want it to be butt wild. Like, I don't know, <laughs> or, you know, just kind of all the way. And, and But less of this kind of holistic, like, hey, there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that and so forth. Like that to me, and then that fits, you know, with a lot of kind of the way society is going now, because most things are compartmentalized now and, and yeah. algorithms further compartmentalize it. Like where, oh yeah, Netflix has a great algorithm that can tell you movies that you'll probably like, but it also shuts off, you know, a, a ton of movies that it shuts off your exploration as well, basically. So yeah. it compartmentalizes you yourself. And I'm not picking on Netflix, just that's the nature of an algorithm is that it's going to keep narrowing and narrowing your interests to try to just give you these things that stimulate you at that moment. And there's little growth can come from that. Yeah. No, it's a great observation. I think, um, you know, that's, that's, um, I think that's part of it is, is we do have other outlets for, you know, getting, getting that type of stuff and just going all the way with it. Right. With the porn and things like that. Whereas maybe back in the eighties, you had to go you know, to a shop and get a, get a videotape, go home, pop it in or get a magazine. You know, now it's like, Everyone's got a phone and iPad, things that can that can they can access um, whatever they want if they want to have Whenever they that want. yeah that intimate or sexual stuff in in their you know media space and then they can go to the movies and other because that's another thing that the article did mention that I just found interesting was also the reduction in the amount of rated R films in general since 1999 yeah. um, and so it's just like yeah there's a certain and I think. You mentioned it, and that's what I wanted to bring up today as well. I thought that was a very interesting observation because it's one I wouldn't have seen um, just being, you know, living in America, that part of the issue is just that Hollywood is truly global. And yeah. it's, it's almost like, just like there's other kind of cultural maybe victims to globalization, I never thought that the way that we consume films and the way that films are now made, um, but I understand it. They were saying how it's... Um, the U.S. market, I think, is almost ten billion, uh, based on the numbers. You know, when they cited them from, in, in terms of revenue for films, but China's at seven and a half billion. Um, I think India, there's like one and a half billion, and it's a growing market. Japan's a huge market, over a billion dollars. So, yeah, when Hollywood and they're making movies now, they got to think about all the other cultural nuances yeah. around the world, and maybe if the they want those movies to be, yeah, if they sell, want those movies correct. to be shown, there. yeah. Yeah. And so maybe the the um, in, in, you know, maybe in India and China, just the type of love scenes that we used to have in movies would be inappropriate. And I found it interesting, James, because besides the topic we're on specifically about love scenes and intimacy in films, um, they said that there's been a massive decline in comedic films as well, because yeah. Yeah. comedy, U.S. comedy films don't cross over as well internationally, which is understandable because we have our own cultural nuances for comedy and, and comedy that are plays funny. on yeah Correct. comedy plays on these nuances that may not be present in other places. Correct. Yeah. And 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 as opposed to they said the sci-fi genre action movies things like that play well across the world and that's because they you know those are more um um universal themes for all humans you know, whether it's aliens coming out of space or you know action movies about war I mean that's more things that that are more common to to more cultures. So yeah I I wouldn't have never thought without reading it the influence of the globalization of films um, and, and how that has now kind of maybe changed the landscape domestically of how films and are made. The other piece that I want to bring up that was mentioned in the article that I think that, that I thought had some credence as well is the rise in like peak TV or, or just, uh, you know, prestige TV, I should say, because peak TV is yeah. something different, but just kind of the rise. And so in because in those environments, you still will get a lot of you know, like sex scenes and, and nudity and so forth. So, you know, but that's more in-depth storytelling a lot. Like movies now, that maybe the storytelling, because you're trying to fit everything into a two-hour window, you know, you're, you're, you're telling stories in a different kind of way than necessarily you might over a, a seven or eight episode, each episode 40 minutes or an hour or so kind of arc where you do yeah. get more intimacy kind of, you know, from a, a, a interaction standpoint in addition to a physical standpoint. And so... The, you're at a, you're able to explore more and do more in those settings than you are in a movie, and so just from a storytelling standpoint, it may be deemed like I, I don't. I'm not out here saying that this is the, a problem or that there's something wrong with us necessarily. Um, I think that it's really it's it's just looking at the cultural evolution. You know, like in, yeah. movies were the prime way to tell long stories, so to speak. In the 90s, you know, or in like, yeah. I guess, you know, in, in, towards the, the turn of the century. Whereas now, if you want to tell a long story with some intimacy, you're probably doing a four, six, eight episode, you know, epi uh, series, you know, like, and, yeah. and that's where, you know, like you're going to get plenty of nudity in those. And so 
you know, like it, it, but I do think kind of the compartmentalization, what you, what the, the feeling you experienced where you're talking about the, your experience with the top gun thing, I think that goes to that compartmentaliz- compartmentalization thing. Cause if you were watching some, you know, adult series on, you know, some streaming service and that happened, I don't think it would have struck you the same way. It, but when you're watching movies now, we just don't have that expectation really as much anymore where there's going to be how, how how much intimacy you're going to get or, you know, they'll probably do a little bit and they're just going to cut away, like kind of accepting what's about to happen. Whereas, you know, again, you go back to when we were kids, you know, in, in the 80s, 90s, like, no, they, no, they, they drove home the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's what happened, you know. And so it, it's but it, it's interesting, though, again, you know, from the cultural evolution standpoint, you got anything else on this one? I don't know. I think it's a good observation yeah. about the series because I've um, <laughs> I don't watch really serious shows, but my wife watches a lot of them, and I actually been surprised with how um, aggressive some of them get with their with their intimate scenes. I'm like, damn, and um, yeah, and um, <laughs> you know, it's like, and and I get surprised too, as a, as again as a heterosexual guy that's not homophobic. Uh, you know, I'm still not used to seeing certain scenes, and I remember like the scene like Last of Us. Remember that series? And, um, you know, it was just like, oh, okay. You know, I was like, all right, you know, let me, let me forward through this one. But, um, <laughs> but it was just interesting that that that's things that I don't think would have been in movies before. You know what I mean? So it's interesting that as you bring it up, I didn't realize that maybe that kind of the streaming series and those things have actually brought in something that maybe wouldn't have been able to come out in a film. You know what I mean? Cause I might've been too, you know, the fact that this is so compartmentalized and not that many people see it, allow it to, to be brought out, you know, only film the, doing only, certain- yeah, only the people who want it, who really seek it yeah. out. It's not like general consumption stuff a lot of times. Correct. So, yeah. I mean, I think that, and, and that's wh- whether that ultimately is better or worse, you know, that gets yeah, into the whole thing of, you know, <laughs> kind of like the loss of the monoculture, so to speak, yeah. that we, we, that people, some people complain about and just some people observe or whatever. And just, you know, like there's a lot that's going on at all times and, but there's not, you know, a movie playing, you know, Back to the Future playing for 30 weeks straight at the movie yeah. theater and people just go see it, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, and it's something that vast numbers of people experience and everything else, everything is very compartmentalized, you know, like, and so, you know, like I look at even like something like The Sopranos where like the finality of Sopranos is like a, a cultural event, but it's viewed by so few people relative to, you know, like the 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 cultural of events that we yeah. think of as or even like you know Seinfeld or you know things like that like those cultural events are just much larger so you know that that the, the loss of the monoculture is really what we might be looking at here and that it intimacy beyond a certain point in movies because movies a lot of times are still more general particularly movies that go to theaters are more yeah. general audience well, than it's you know, interesting it may not you be say the, that the forum for it anymore because we might be be creating more of a global monoculture with all this shared all around the country's media but then that'll increase maybe some subcultures of still you know a differentiation you know within the various uh areas of the monoculture so yeah it's yeah. interesting man it's gonna it's 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 ever ever changing world and that's all we can say yeah yeah the only thing that's constant is change and you yeah know, like that it's unfortunate when people fight so hard against change because you know, I know. Just, well i'm getting i'm getting to the age where i'm starting to, i'm getting to the age where i'm starting not to like it so <laughs> no no you're getting to the age I'm, you're gonna start yeah, playing against I, change yeah i'm gonna start oh, man. shaking my fist at the clouds soon so you it's, know, a, it's a losing battle man i'm about 10 but, years uh, away from I, that but that's a different <laughs> story <laughs> but no i think we can wrap from there we appreciate everybody yeah. joining us on this episode call it like i see it check out part one as well when we looked at the double standards and play in politics and until next time i'm james keys i'm tunde agamana and we'll talk to you later <laughs>